Will you please join me in welcoming our first lovely lady of Las Vegas, the very Reverend Anne Whitfield. really thrilled and honored uh, to be here with you all today. Uh, this is a new venture for me, and getting to know Gateway and the people of Gateway has just been wonderful. I can't uh, wait to get more involved, not as an honored person, but as a worker for the things that are going on. A couple of things about myself. First of all, as I was introduced, I am a reverend, I'm an Episcopal priest, and just celebrated my 19th ordination anniversary. And I coupled that with 17 years of part-time to full-time lay ministry working in the church, so that brings me up to 36 years that I have been actively preaching the gospel. <laughs> Healing the sick, making the blind to see, the deaf to hear, and particularly the dead to rise again. But that is my first love, that is my calling on my life, that is my vocation. And I've had some very interesting times um, being a woman priest. And I'll share a couple of those with you. Before we go to the art, one of the interesting things that I had is uh, just getting ordained was a treat. Um, women were not particularly welcomed um, at that time. There weren't very many of us, and there were a lot of the gentlemen at that time that uh, would stand in our way. And it took me two and a half years to get one man off of the standing committee in our diocese so I could get ordained because he was not going to vote for me to be okay no matter what. So it took a long time and it happened at convention with the whole state there and, and uh, just before the bishop went out to do the Eucharist he uh, called me aside and said they just passed you but you can't express anything you don't know so you go out there straight faced I said okay so I started to walk out to the altar with the bishop and the whole diocese and convention stood up and started yelling and screaming and applauding and hollering I looked at the bishop I said so much for your secrets <laughs> there's no secrets with the Holy Spirit I've moved all over the country in service to the Lord. I've lived in nine different states, and I've had many experiences because God never puts you in an easy position. He always challenges you. One of the great challenges I had was I was called to be a chaplain in an Episcopal school in Baton Rouge, and it was grade K through 12. Now, I went to Baton Rouge well, let's put it this way. I was born and raised in New York City. <laughs> and then I lived in California and all around. And, and so going to Baton Rouge was a real culture shock to me. And I wasn't really thrilled about the idea of going, but um, that's where I was called. Now, I had worked with kids in chaplaincy positions and psychiatric resident facilities and things like that for many years. So being a chaplain in school was a piece of cake. And uh, so I walked in the first day that I was to report for school and went into my office and the secretary came in and she hands me these books. There's three red books. And I said, she said, here are your books. I go, what are they? And she said, well, they're your grade books and lesson plans. And I'm going, I don't need a grade book. I don't need a lesson plan. I'm the chaplain. She said, what, you're going to be teaching religion? What? <laughs> so come to find out that part that I was not told about the position was that I was going to teach religion grades 2 through 
eighth grade, and there was no curriculum. So this is the first day of school, so I have never been in a public school classroom as a teacher. I have never even seen the inside of a grade book, and I didn't know how to do lesson plans or anything like that. Huge learning curve. So I went that first day flying by the seat of my pants and had my fifth graders going out the windows and under the desk and all around. Not sure exactly how far I could go with my discipline. I knew what I wanted to do. But the only complaint I got after the first month that I was there was from some of the teachers in the grade school who told me that my bulletin boards were really awful. So they did an intervention and ganged up on me and taught me how to do a bulletin board. <laughs> but those are the kinds of things that were fun and uh, interesting and that you find that you learn throughout your life. I wound up uh, later on learning to do uh, healing touch, which is energy work. And um, thank you. Thank you. Um, that turned out because I was having a massage on my honeymoon in Puerto Vallarta and it was just such a wonderful experience in that particular setting and with this particular therapist and I thought to myself, why can't you do this and also be praying for the person for healing in all those different areas of the body that you're massaging? So I took that home with me and I thought, there must be a way. And I started researching and looking and all of a sudden, from a friend in Kansas of all places, it drops in my lap. Somebody already figured that out. So I went to school to a Christian uh, healing touch and wound up a practitioner. And that started a whole new avenue for me where I used uh, energy work, healing touch, and prayer, aromatherapy in my spiritual direction, in my healing workshops, and it's just been a new adventure and uh, lots of different people from walks of life to meet that way. So my 36 years have been a real journey. Now, I had to retire early for health reasons, and when I did, I thought, what am I going to do with myself? And I was limited in my mobility at that time. So I went back to art. Now I painted as a young person, um, but it had been a very long time. But I drug out all my stuff and thought, well, I'll start over again, and I did. And then I took lessons from Anne Radley, who was a fine artist, has studied in New York and Paris and all over, and really uh, got enthusiastic about it. But for me, art was not um, to be shown, it wasn't to sell, it wasn't uh, any of those purposes. It was strictly a, a therapeutic, meditative, relaxing pleasure for myself. I just enjoyed it. And I didn't care if anybody liked it, because I didn't think anybody was ever going to see it. Anyway. But I guess God had different plans, because all of a sudden, I don't know, I started selling a couple of things, and then people got more interested and whatnot. So here I am today with some of my art that I want to talk to you about because uh, I just think that it's much more fun than just looking at it. Excuse me. This particular painting here I would like to draw your attention to. This was, um, this painting is commissioned and the people had the canvas, this oval type canvas, and it had a painting on it. This is not like regular canvas, it's almost like a uh, sailcloth that you'd use. And it had a picture on it, and they wanted me to paint over what was there because the 
the shape of the canvas was exactly what they wanted. And they wanted me to paint what they saw out of their uh, window at their home. So my first draft, and I know that y'all can't see this, but I'm going to show you just that it's here. You can look at it later. My first draft of this was very different. I had their fence, their patio, their garden, all kinds of things that they saw outside their window. And then the mountains. Well, no. That wasn't at all what they wanted. No, 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 no. This is why doing commissions fun. <laughs> so, okay. So take out, the, take out the fence, take out the patio, take out the flowers, take out the snow. And the colors were too bright. Now you might notice that um, I'm a bright color painter. I really love color. Um, but now it was much too bright. I had to soften everything. And so I, I worked again and I took out all the things and I made another painting and they looked at that and said, nope, the colors were still too bright. So I tried to soften it down and soften it down. Now this is difficult when you're going against your whole nature that says, splash that color on. One of the other things that's interesting about this, if you come and look at it, you'll see here and down here and over here the painting that was painted prior to mine and however it was done, it left impressions on the sailcloth. So I tried to cover those up in certain ways and make them blend in, like the rain coming down and, and things like that, but you can still see them. In any case, third try was a charm and they liked this one. So this is the one they're going to get as soon as this is over. <laughs> Uh, this painting I did several years ago, this was, uh, it's called Anniversary Glory, and this was for my husband's and my anniversary as I painted it, uh, the two becoming one. And you can see the two figures and that come one and they're joined together and they're praising the Lord for bringing them together and for the wonderful life that we have. So um, that was an early painting that I did. The far painting over here, uh, the cross and Christ, I did this past Lent. Um, I love Lent. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with Lent, it's a time of penitence. It's a time in the church where we look to um, Christ's suffering and we do repentance and whatnot as we wait for the resurrection. And so it was during that particular time, I wasn't having a very good Lent that year, but I went home and I took out my paints and I decided I was going to paint what I was feeling. This is how I started. It was just my feelings, what was going on internally with me, with almost all of my artwork. So I started painting. And to me, this depicts the, it's called, it is finished, and it depicts exactly that moment with Christ as he was on the cross and said, it is finished, and gives up his spirit. And at that particular time, the temple uh, curtain was torn in two, that's the purple that was there, the lightning and the thunder that came upon uh, the earth, and then I tried to depict the energy of the body, the spiritual body, just bursting forth from that cross as his spirit rose to the heavens and all the color and energy. I, I just sort of think of God in my mind as a source encompassing all color, all energy, all light in the whole universe. And when it all came together and burst forth from the cross, that, that was my feeling of joy through the suffering. And um, after I painted that, actually I felt a whole lot better. <laughs> so that's what it goes. 
The little picture over here of the lily of the Niles, I did that one not too long ago, and I had read about a whole new technique in one of my art books, and um, so I tried that out on there. Some cards are up here. So um, come up and look, ask questions, um, either way, and I just thank you all for being here and for the opportunity to speak to you. If you do, please see her afterwards, uh, and we will continue on. Thank you so much.